What's up, YouTube? Mr. Lamanessi here, and today we're going to be doing part hell of the Phoenix Strike Assassin Martial Arts Guided Playthrough Let's Play. Again, kind of named both of them, whatever you would like. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun, but again, we're also going to have to make some adjustments now that we're in hell, because again, a lot of builds can be great and normal, decent and nightmare, and then when they get to hell, they really start to fall off, you really start to see the weaknesses. I think this build will actually hold up okay. Um, I do believe we'll be able to kill a lot of mobs, things like that. Obviously, we are going to have to be in close range, which can be a little dangerous. But we do have a lot of crowd control and stuff between our Holy Freeze and our Freezing from the Chaos Bolt and all of that. So, I think we'll still be able to do alright. Um, but it'll definitely be more boss jumping and those sorts of things. As I'm not going to spend forever trying to level up over and over again in this which I would recommend, and then also like farming items, I would also recommend to you guys. But again, on these, you know, let's plays right here, we're trying to kind of get through the game in an okay amount of time. So hopefully you should be able to see that. But the first thing I'll say before we even do that, and again, we can just do a quick look at where we have our character currently. You can see mostly stacked in vitality. I've got up to 50 strength and dexterity um, so that I can use some blade talons. Right there, 50-50. Um, otherwise, you know, just vitality dumping. And then over here, I've maxed out Claws of Thunder and Phoenix Strike. Um, and I'm working up Blades of Ice as well. And you can see I've got a little bit of into Burst of Speed. Simple Point into Cloak of Shadows and Mind Blast for some crowd control. Nothing in traps. Some people would say, why don't you run Death Sentry? And you can, but then you're kind of a traps in uh, who just happens to be kicking for fun. So this is kind of working, again, more into the Phoenix Strike build right there. Then for gear, we have Pattern. Um, just a nice little 15 all res and gives a couple of bonuses, which is nice. Lore for the plus one skills, the res, all of that. Um, fire res, amulet. Didn't really get anything else with it, unfortunately. A little attack rating and stuff. Rhyme Shield for Cannot Be Frozen, Stealth Armor for the faster run walk and hit recovery and cast rate. We got Sanders Gloves. Um, this 99 AR ring with dual res right there. Our belt isn't very good. I made a shop a better belt. A dwarf star ring and these boots that we shopped. Plus just some random charms with some resistances and life and attack rating on them. Um, so, really quick. Again, I'm going to just make the note and we can say players uh, 8. So let me actually join back in. That you can spend time, yes, I have Rhyme right now. If I had found another source of Canopy Frozen, I may consider running Dual Patterns or something, or an Ancient's Pledge. But if I ran Dual Pattern, then I would get Weapon Block, which is really nice. Um, and then I'd also probably be using Dragon Claw for my finisher, since I get both of the hits at the same time, which is super nice. And also I can build up two charges at once for Claws of Thunder, Blades of Ice, and Fist of Fire when I do that. Um, but, again, I have, like, Death's Hand, but not Death's Sash, and that would be something that I could go and try and find if I wanted, right? Again, we saw that the Cow King, uh, is really not a bad place to, to look for it in normal, and with the magic find that I have now, it's gonna be pretty decent, so, you know definitely a, a consideration and this is players eight right here and you can see how easy this is and how fast I'm able to kind of build up uh, charges there and my experience so again if you want um, you can just go through and keep leveling up right here right it's not a a really crazy difficult thing it's not super dangerous like you get your freeze off pretty quickly and easily and then you can just build up charges and kind of let them go on dudes. Nice and easy. So, it just takes a second. But this is a great way to level up your character. Um, which can, again, just be a really good thing to do. If you're like, hey, I want to be a higher level going into, you know, hell. Right? That's just... Some people will want to be a higher level going into hell because hell is very difficult. And again, your chance to hit and all of this is going to be worse in hell. 
Which can just be, you know, very uh, problematic, right? Can just be a big issue. So, kind of pick and choose how you want to do it. But again, this is players eight, right? Like, we're, we're not on P1 right here and it's this sort of speed. We're on players eight and we're doing decently well, I would say. And just a little bit more. Plus, you can also find some items and stuff while you're doing this, which can be nice. But let's just finish here and level up. Perfect. Okay, so that's level 59. Again, we could keep going up. I mean, that was a couple minutes to go from 58 to 59. So we could keep going up there if we wanted. I'm just going to put another point into Blades of Ice. And uh, really fast, we're going to try our, our, our quick luck chance right here of the Cow King. Just to see if we can get that Death Sash, because I really think it would be super fun. Again, I would probably recommend this to everybody who's playing to give it a try. Um, also, we should go back to Players 1. Let me just stop it. Okay, player's one. I would recommend it, um, you know, spending the 30, 40 minutes, whatever it is, farming for something like this. Because I really do think it adds a lot of fun um, being able to be like a dual claw assassin doing this or something, right? Um, so again, it's not too, not too bad. Normal council is a good place for the sash. I mean, it's probably also an okay place, but this is the the odds here are are astronomically better, right? This is like the place for the sash is doing the cows. I mean, again, it's like one in forty or something chances with the magic find that I have now. So let's go ahead and move that over. And we'll just see. And I'm going to let my mercenary kill because he has a lot more magic find. And we don't get it. I don't believe I have one in my shared stash. I mean, I have one somewhere. You know. But that's okay. We gave it a try. We're worth a shot for a little bit of fun. And even right there, it's like 22 MF gloves, right? Just these little things can be super, super useful um, that you can just hold on to for later, and then you can use those to go magic find or something, right? 9% extra gold, we'll get rid of that. And I'm going to move this over and get full rejuice going. Okay, so we can put those away. Get rid of that. And we are now in hell. So the first thing I'm going to do in hell here is I'm actually going to look um, at my rings. I have this ring right here, which has a lot of resistances on it. And so I'm actually going to remove the dwarf star now because my resistances are a little lower. And I'm going to put this on. Uh, just to get my res up a little more, you can see my light res is a little bit low still, but otherwise my resistances really aren't terrible, which is pretty nice. So, I like that. And now we can head out and start, uh, beginning hell. So the first thing to say is, again, you are gonna want to be careful in hell, as there is going to be a lot more stuff that you're going to run into, right? You're gonna, monsters are just going to be much more difficult to deal with. There's gonna be a lot more like cold immune monsters and stuff uh, that you're gonna have to fight. Your mercenaries gonna probably get smacked around a lot easier. So you really need to be careful. I mean, Emilio's already really struggling there. So you're gonna have to just watch out really really take them away from a lot of the action there if they're getting into difficult situations and especially if you're like cursed and stuff and Emilio's cursed 
And you can see Amelia's already died. I mean, it's just... It's just so difficult. Which really sucks, because it's like, oh, and this is where having those extra levels and stuff can actually be really beneficial, right? So, and also having gold will be very helpful just for that piece. So this is just, you know, again, just annoying. And I mean, I have Scolders on him, but Scolders isn't really a great armor. It does give him a lot of defense, but you can see his resistances are definitely lower and stuff. Also, the Meat Scraper... Probably starting to not have enough damage for him to fully survive. So we may look at if we can find something nice for him a little bit later. Find him that insight or whatever. Then that could be really helpful, you know. But he can kind of do okay in very limited capacities. It's just on an overall capacity, it's going to be kind of tough for him. Yeah, I mean, hell difficulty is where the game really begins for a lot of characters. And again, this is why we're not going to be, you know, spending time killing every single thing, all the stuff. It's going to be a little bit more of a, a rush through. But I do want to show, again, that if you're okay with taking a little bit of time, these characters can actually be really fun, right? So if you're trying to be a hammered in and speed through the game and all of that, this isn't going to be the character for you, right? This is that's just kind of the nature of it there. Is this this isn't a character for for that at all. But for people who want to play the game in a new different way, get a different experience whatever, I really do think this is a great character. I'll check those greater talents actually in a second. Because, again, I mean, notice how easily I'm able to deal with a lot of different types of monsters. One to Dragon Tail. Right? Like, it's really not too bad here. There's cold immunes, there's light immunes, fire immunes, whatever, and we're able to deal with them pretty well. I would definitely say light immunes are probably going to be the hardest thing for us. Um, because a lot of the damage that we're actually getting comes from the light explosions. But we still probably can deal with them. Plus, uh, we'll have the ability to lower resist them later on if we want with our wand. So, Emilio, don't you dare die. <laughs> and cold immunes will also be a little difficult because we can't freeze the cold immunes. So they're going to be slowed by Decrepify, but they're not actually going to be frozen. So, you know, everything's kind of got its different things. But, that's just, uh, how it goes. When does the better drops for subs buff come into effect? Uh, it can take a little bit to sync with your care, with your, uh, account. But, you know, should be there within a few days. Yeah, we're just using the Pattern Claw. There's really not a lot of great options for the in-betweens, it feels like. Strength is, you know, okay, but again, we're, we're really kind of wanting a little more survivability and all of this, so... And it doesn't always end up being the greatest there. Go back and get some potions. And also, grabbing items for gold can be useful because we will probably have to resurrect our mercenary a few times. Just the nature of how it'll go. Oh boy. He's lightning enchanted. Goodbye, mercenary. <laughs> no chance there. Light enchant, fire enchant, immune to cold. Uh, this is going to be a tough one. This is going to be a tough one. That's a very bad spawn for us. On top of just the damage and stuff that we're going to take from it. We 
We do have Mind Blasts, and we do have Cloak of Shadows, so we can we can Mind Blast to, you know, kind of get them off of us. But the Lightning Enchant, again, just the, the damage is just going to be too high there. Ouch. You know, so, okay, we can convince him over to, to join our side there for a second, but again, kind of puts us in a very tricky space here. As we don't really have a great way to damage someone who's immune to all of our different damage types, basically. And we'll proc and kill our mercenary instantly. It's a difficult, uh, very difficult combination here. Whew. This would be a map I would generally say reroll. Which is why a lot of times it's good to go and actually check if you want to re-roll it before, just to see if Corpse Fire does happen to roll, like, the perfect anti-U. Um, we can put this on first. So we can put our strength on, get the crushing blow, which will be helpful. We'll grab our mercenary. And now with our crushing blow hits, we can at least... Uh, do this. We also have lower resist. So we can lower resist him as well. And try our best here. It's just so bad. Thank you, Bia McSherry! So getting in a spot where his bolts aren't really hitting is uh, also very helpful. And I mean, I, I don't know if we're going to find a much worse combination for ourselves here than this. This is pretty... Pretty rough, so if we can, you know, get out of this one, we, we should feel pretty good. Let's go heal really quickly. And slow and steady. Perfect! There you go. And just like that, we somehow beat the impossible monster. Which is lovely. Pick that up, get some gold from it. And we can swap it. Not bad. Not bad at all. And there's more gold for us. So, always helpful because, again, we will definitely need gold as we uh, go through this. Now, we could also look at adding venom to our weapon. Um, it adds a little bit of poison damage. I know we can't really see it very well right there. Let me do this. Um... You know, 60 to 80 poison damage. The problem is it's over 0.4 seconds and it messes up any other poison damage that you have. So it's kind of a faster hitting poison, but... You know, I just wanted to mention it because some people will say it, right? That like, oh, you can do that. But I would rather continue beefing this up. This beefs up our Blades of Ice and our Phoenix Strike so we can have the combination... There of those. Let's put our gold away. And let us continue. So, do you need to do things like that? No. 
again, this is where you kind of get the option there, right, of how do I want to fight? Try and save Emilio. He's not going to get saved, is he? You gotta really work hard for your mercenary there. And again, Emilio's kinda starting to lose, you know, because his resistances are a little lower and stuff, it is making it a little more difficult for him. So, and he doesn't have a weapon that's crazy high damage, which is also not helping his cause. Thank you. In practice and BM McSherry, appreciate that. The Korat, the Inner Cloister? Ah, yes. The classic. Before they removed him. But again, the more that we can freeze things up like this, the better it can be for us. But it doesn't even matter there, you know. It really is... Really is tough. Anything with curse is just going to wreck Emilio so fast. And there's some lightning immunes, and again, lightning immunes, like we said, are possible to kill, but are going to be harder to kill. This should be Burial Grounds, yeah. Is this still Players 8? No, this should be Players 1 now. This is just Hell Mode. Diablo 2 Hell Mode. That's it. So, uh, melee is going, or fire immunes are going to be our favorite of what we'd like to, to find to kill. Light immunes probably our least favorite, and cold immunes somewhere in the middle. Um, again, the leech kind of have their own benefit and, you know, issues themselves, but build up my charges and then go in for a little Rakanishu love. And Rakanishu again is going to be an annoying mob because you're getting the combination of all the different things, right? So sometimes you just say, eh, I'll leave it be. And that's unfortunately going to have to be your response many times with uh, this build. Blocked. Or, you can very easily slow play it, where you do kill each one of the monsters, and you take your time, and you're mind blasting, and you're using Cloak of Shadows, and doing all of the little tricks and tips to make it a little bit easier, right? So, don't feel like there's only one specific way to play that you have to be running away from stuff. Because, again, certain characters... You know, if you're a cold sorceress, and there's cold immunes, you have to just leave it, pretty much, right? I mean, it, it, it makes no sense to try and go in and do all this fighting and all this stuff against cold immunes. You don't do any damage. Yes, you can do a dual spec. Oops, didn't mean to grab that. Uh, if you want, but overall, doesn't really make sense. Oh boy, that's death. <laughs> Sometimes you run into death, that's okay. I don't have treachery, no. We did not find a lem rune. Did we do our Nightmare Forge? I want to say we did, but I don't remember what rune we got from it, so maybe we didn't. Okay. So we'll just go back, run through again. And again, just make sure we set our teleport. Yeah, I mean, like I say, if you if you run through like that, sometimes death 
happens. Get caught between a mite aura and a wall. You know, what are you what are you gonna do, right? Oh yeah, Warren, it's so good. <laughs> Build up some charges and take them to Rakanishu. Just work for a little level up here. I mean, Rakanisha is always going to be a little tricky. Cursed as always. What else is new in uh, hell? <laughs> but again, ha having all the multi damage types really is helpful. Really does a lot for the. Uh, character overall because again just makes it kind of fun you know and we'll get rid of our curse what's the strongest melee assassin I mean this one's not bad for sure as you get a lot of gear on her as well and like when she gets more skill points and stuff as she levels up, she's gonna get even stronger, right? You're really gonna be able to start boosting all of those damage types up. You can run around, you know, with conviction aura and stuff on your mercenary. October 6th, dude. So uh, there's really a lot of benefit. I would definitely avoid things like Spike Fiend, Quill Rat, that stuff, like archers, you know, there's just certain monster types that I would say not worth fighting. And we'll go ahead and grab the uh, scroll there. We can go back and save Kane if we want. Why not? Here's Black Marsh. This is a character that can do the tower. Um, so again, it can take a little bit of time, but you never know what runes you can get from it, right? I mean, this is where you can get a Lem rune and then you can make treachery, right? Now, the downside about treachery is that it's going to have that chance for fade, which will overwrite your burst of speed. So you may have to, you know, come back with that, right? The upside is you get plus two to assassin skills, which is fabulous on this character. Um, you're also going to get the 45 IES, which is also really nice. So, you know, it's like, Okay, with that, I don't need to worry about IES for my gloves. I can put something else in my glove slot, blah, blah, blah. But plus two skills is really going to be helpful. Um, just because, again, all the plus skills are, are where the damage comes from on, you know, these sorts of builds, right? Okay, level 60. The more plus skills, the more your Phoenix Strike does, the more your Claws do, Thunder, your Blades of Ice, etc, etc, etc. You do get the Venom proc as well. This is true. So again, if you want that, which here doesn't matter too much, I mean, it's kind of if you're, if you're into it or not. But it, it is still nice, right? Like, I, I do think... Ooh, archers all over the place. We say, no thank you. 
If you want to fight archers, you'd be my guest. I am going to pass on those right now and say maybe next time. Okay. Ouch. <laughs> oh boy. A little spicy. So squishy. I mean, again, you do have to get into the action. So even though we're an assassin who is, you know, usually pretty good and a little tanky, the fact that you have to get so in involved can be tricky. And now, you can also, let's say you do want to fight archers because you're a maniac, you can definitely, you know, take advantage of the fact that... Um, let me kill her really fast that you do have like mind blasts and stuff, right? And cloak of shadows. So you can do that to to kind of get them working against them. Am eth tal. So here I can come over to like these archers. Ah, eh, those have holy freeze. I don't even want to fight holy freeze ones in a example one. But you know, you can mind blast and all of that, right? But there you go. There's countess farming. I mean, again, really not that difficult. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, Fade is also extremely good on an Assassin. Now, I like it because I like running fast, um, but I like Burst of Speed, but it's also really useful for the attack speed that you get from it. Uh, having that additional uh, attack speed is, is really nice for just all of your hits. So, you know. But Fade does give you physical damage reduction, massive resistances, all of this. So, again, totally, totally a viable skill. How about MFing with this character? I mean, again, if you get this character really, like, maxed out, this is not a bad character at all. Is it S tier? No, right? It's not a Hammerden, but I mean, we know it's not a Hammerden. Nothing really is a Hammerden. You know, Light Source Hammerden kind of go in their league of their own. But with all of the skills and stuff, I mean, it opens up a ton of options. You can really go anywhere. Obviously, with new Sunder Charms, it probably hurts a character like this a little bit because the whole point was, oh, I can farm it all with this. But, I mean, still. Didn't see those. Shadow Warrior not worth the points? I mean, again, working, you know, down, there's a couple more points to get to a Shadow Warrior, which is okay. I do imagine the Shadow Warrior dies a lot, but it is really nice for, you know, okay, if you want to get a Shadow Warrior, you can throw that Shadow Warrior out there, and it gives you a little more crowd control. It gives you someone to, to just handle a little bit. The problem really is the martial arts assassin, like Warren is saying, needs so many skill points. You need points for Phoenix Strike, for Blades, for Claws, maybe Fist of Fire. If you want to put more into your finisher, if you want more for Burst of Speed, you want to get your utilities, if you want to get Death Sentry, if you want to pump those. I mean, it's just, there's so many skill points that she she really needs, and so it, it makes it difficult. Um, do you want more damage? Do you want more utility? You get, you got to kind of decide for yourself and kind of stick with it a little bit. So I'm going for damage for my own character here where, you know, I'm really doing a lot of the work, putting in a lot of the damage. You know, I like that a lot. Here's an example of uh, some archers. And again, you can just do that same thing. And then you can come over. 
so for people who have some crazy urge to fight archers actually it is possible again it just depends how fast you want to push through the game how much you want to fight and deal with stuff that's just brutal versus not whatever right but there's a great example of taking on archers nice and easy and using the variety of skills that, that we've built up you know over the over our play and just those crowd control skills that the assassin has which really are are just great skills slip and slide thank you for the sub we'll leave that one alone I really do wish I had more resistances. That's the that is the one downside right now. Our res, light res, cold res are a little bit low. Fade would improve that a lot and would make me a lot more uh, safe. And yeah, this is where we can, you know, look at belts here. There's a lightning res 21%. You can you can shop around for different things see what see what stuff has because yeah even one point in fade is going to be uh 19 res with the one percent dr but obviously the higher is going to be the better there for sure i just have my stealth on which is okay but you know, there's definitely better armors. Something like a Spirit Shroud would be amazing. Then I get Cannot Be Frozen there. Plus I get... Um, plus one to all skills, which is really nice. It's like I'd be very happy getting that. Get him. And I mean, these aren't even levels that we super ultra need, right? I'm kind of killing more than I need to because I just am enjoying the character, honestly. But we're level 60. We could technically speed run through kind of the rest of the game. Um, but, you know, again, this is where I really think having, having your own fun with it and taking your time can be a, a nice way to play it. Knock him back. Build my charges. Unleash on some dudes. Rinse repeat. The new stuffs mode are good to play? Yes. Amrune, hello, how are you? <laughs> Five months, let's go. Let's do. Thanks, Ivo. Uh oh, that's. <laughs> I saw them too late. All right, it's unfortunate. 
I looked over right as they were starting to shoot. I was like, oh wait, no. They're extra fast. That's... That's bad. <laughs> Thank you, Ivo! Alright. It's one too many deaths. One too many. We're gonna stop dying now. <sighs> Such is life. So how many deaths so far? Only like five, I think, overall. Just too many today. And this is also where something as simple as, like, Angelics can be super nice, right? Because then you can just get that big burst, which is just going to be super helpful. So. Some boost of, uh... Attack rating definitely is helpful. We're, we're definitely starting to feel the missing attack rating now. It just takes a little too long to build our charges up, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. 25 poison damage. We have 15, though. Doesn't really change much there. Treachery would be nice, yes. Because it gives that high level fade as well. Like, one point in fade, two points in fade is okay. But getting that higher level fade really helps with uh, just a lot of the pieces. So, And we actually just want to move past that because I don't want to deal with those tainteds there. I don't have a lum either, so there's no smoke to be made. That would also be a nice... A uh, combination. Again, we would lose, you know, a little fast run walk and stuff, but gaining 50 to all res would be uh, pretty invaluable right now, I would say. That would definitely tank our character up a lot. <laughs> Hello, Danish. How are you? But running around up here, still fun. And again, we can always pop a lot of stuff, which is kind of nice. You never know what you're gonna get in terms of like, oh, I found a, oh geez, fanaticism in there. Uh, let's go this way. In terms of, you know, just really good runes and things like that, that can drop. I mean, in hell, there's all sorts of stuff that you'll just get out of random things. So. Spicy. Now, I'm obviously going through at the faster speeds. I'm also lower level as well. Again, I'm only level 60. Characters like this, remember how earlier on in Normal and Nightmare we were, by the way, if you want to get waypoint here, can be a good checkpoint for you. Plus, it can also be um, just really like nice, right, for farming in Dariel or something. So you can always just go back, get yourself the waypoint. But earlier on, remember how we were always, I was talking about, make sure you're over leveled, make sure you're over leveled, right? Like staying up on levels is really helpful. Cause then even if you have a bad attack rating, you're still going to be able to hit more often. But whenever you start to get less and less on the attack rating there and the levels, 
then it starts to get more, uh, become more of an issue. Okay, meanwhile, with the five gifted subs, thank you so much. Today is the last day of gifted subs and just subs being at a discount. Last day for it. I almost feel like we should do like sub matching or something. Again, if you want to kill all the stuff in here, go ahead. If you just want to kill some of it, go ahead. Close the door on those guys so they can't come in. It's always a fun little tip that helps you out. And I'm just going to kind of clear out the room right here. Honestly, if I get treachery, I wonder if my IS would be high enough that I don't even really need to worry about burst of speed. Now, I would lose a lot of fast run walk, though. That would be the one sadness, but otherwise... Come on. Yeah, Treachery's got the IAS built in, that's what I'm saying. So even though I get the fade from it, then I wouldn't need the burst of speed. It is very possible. Oh boy. Tainteds. Champion Tainteds. Not my favorite here. But, again, we've had Cold Immunes, Fire Immunes. Why not some Light Immunes? Slow and steady. Just try and keep them away from Endariel as I don't want to fight Endariel and these guys at the same time. More slow than steady? I mean, it's both. It's both. How are you alive? Cool. So just cleaning that out. And we can put our strength on for Endario. And uh, fight Endario now. Now, again, chance to hit. Gonna be way worse here. The nice thing is, whenever you have a charge, your charge automatically hits. So we'll come back, we'll sell some things. And we'll buy some antidote potions. We can chug these right now for just some more resistances to start. And then we can keep a couple as well for the fight. Now, something you can also do is you can go to something like the Cold Plains and build up charges over here and then you have a little bit of time and you can run back and get those charges off on Endariel. So it's a way to slightly cheese it. We also of course have 
our lower resist that we can use here to help out with some damage there as well. and easy and maybe a couple more charges one more meteor perfect and just like that, how simple was that, everybody? You are the master of Act 1. Easy clap, and Dariel dead. Not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Let's put, let's put this up. Last day, 25% off subs, matching all subs, subs to match, five, I think there's a couple more, seven. Perfect. Okay. 50 laughing face. Safi Rose with 50 months. Thank you very much. We kind of have enough chip gems. We're pretty good there. <laughs> Fist of fire and a dead belt. Yeah. And now again, you'll notice that these rejuves that we've been saving up have been uh, kind of nice. So, we're in Act 2. I actually really quick want to go back to Nightmare. 3 plus 3 equals 4 Leaf Clover. Thank you, Cyrus and Rickety Crickets! With 5 gifted subs! Let's go back here. And we did not do it. So let's go do our Nightmare Forge and just see what rune we stumble upon. Because you can get up to a um rune doing this. Which can actually be really nice. So, let's go back and check it out. And also potentially just some nice gold. <laughs> it's Umrun, yeah. If that was Rockstopper, oh. that would be amazing. Milk Door with five gifted subs as well. My goodness. Even let him get a chance. So we'll see what we can snag here. Come on, baby. It is Polrun, which actually opens up a wisdom for us. Hmm. Huh. 
So pull if eld Do I have an eld rune? I'm not sure I do. Mm, I don't see it. Don't see it. But pull if eld would get us wisdom. I'll show that to you guys right here. Which has a lot of whatever. But bonus attack rating is nice. 10 energy, but cannot be frozen. Also 5 mana per kill. So we'd be losing plus 1 to skills, but we would gain our secondary slot where we could run a second claw and go for a double claw hit. We could also run an Ancient's Pledge just to get more resistances. The bonus AR is maybe slightly pushing me. We do lose the 30% light res when we do it, though. If we did a second pattern, we would also lose 10 all res on top of it. So the question is, are we starting to lose too much resistance, which is potentially true? Um... I think without a treachery, I don't want to do it. And I don't want to try and put a bunch of points into Fade. That'll just kind of be a lot. So we'll hold it for now. When else are you going to make Wisdom? I mean, on a bow character a hundred percent but you know it does give us that shift over right there which which is a nice thing but yeah it, it has its uh, difficulty now Getting Lemrune. We could farm Countess in Hell to get a Lemrune. We could go for... Uh, and I'm even going to show this as well. Let me let me do this. We could do Lower Crust Farming and Nightmare for it. Or in Hell. But here is Treachery. It's Shale Thole Lem in a 3 open socket armor. It gives you a 5% chance to cast level 15 Fade. That's 15% physical DR plus like 60 something all res or something like that. 25% chance to cast level 15 Venom. So you actually get a decent amount of poison damage attached uh, just to help out a little bit. Plus 2 to Assassin skills, which is super solid because again, plus to skills is so good for us. 45 IAS. This is kind of making up for the lack of burst of speed. Again, we're going to run a lot slower, but it's going to give us the IES that's probably going to bring it back up. And this is where we could even use our calculator and say something like, okay, if I have a level zero burst of speed, you know, okay, well, I need 60 IES. And I get that with 45 from Treachery and 20 from my gloves. So even without Bursts of Speed, I can still hit 7 frames, assuming I use Greater Talons. And if I use Blade Talons... Uh, where's my blades? I can get to the 8 right there. Um, I won't be able to hit the 7, right? But if I use Graders, I can get to the 7. Either way... Both would still be fine, though, right? But I may consider, you know, at that point, making my greater talons now into that, getting up to those, and then getting onto that seven. Again, just thoughts and ideas. You also get 20 hit recovery and 30% cold res as just small boost as well. Treachery is a huge, huge thing. Oh, there you go. 60% resist all. Um, 
huge boost and honestly probably the best thing that we could ask for on this character would be getting a uh a lemrune So, when I say farm LK, farm Lord Kuros, what I mean is literally going in and uh, popping all the chests on players 8. Emilio, why do you always die? Ow, no, Emilio! How did he survive? He's level 58. I can't I can't really get him much higher level. Milio was a champ on that one though. Uh-oh, curse. Nice. Good level up, Emilio. Good level up, buddy. Emilio is somehow hanging in there by the skin of his teeth right now. <gasps> no, I'm the one who died? Stupid cold enchant. It was my fault. Such is life. Alright. Anyways, Milo, you did your best. <laughs> we failed him. But yeah, treachery honestly would, would help a ton there. Even smoke at this point would be really solid if we got a Nephron and a Lumrune, getting 50 to all resist. Because you can see this character's biggest struggle right now is that I have to be up in the fight, right? I have to be sitting there trying to tank these guys, hitting them. Obviously, I can do more with Mind Blast and stuff to, like, help it out some. But, I, you know... I need to be in the action. And that's really one of the biggest difficulties. And so the more that I can have help from things like, you know, Mind Blast, whatever, the more I can have Fade. If I got like a Rock Stopper, get some of the physical damage reduction from that. Just any and all of those things are absolutely huge. And helping out a character like this because you're just you're in the battle and and you really will notice such a shift if you spend a couple seconds farming on this character right if you go and farm that death sash combination and get the you know bonus res and is and all that if you go and get angelic's ring and ami which isn't crazy right like that's that's actually really really nice did I get a waypoint there? I'm not sure I did. Um, you know, not not too crazy to find. You can go and just farm like, you know, normal Mephisto and stuff like that. Nightmare and Dario. Just farm them for, for a little bit. And you'll be able to get these different pieces, which will make this playthrough a lot better for you. And again, I just don't 
have the time on a guided playthrough because I'm not trying to make it an hour long sort of thing. Um, or not an hour, you know, like 20 hours to play through because I spend like three hours, two hours farming normal cow and cow king and stuff like that. Um, so I'm not doing that for those specific reasons, but I do highly recommend it. It really will, uh, like I say, improve your run, make it a lot more fun, just make it an enjoyable time overall. So let us go into the Viper Temple. Pray we get a good map. Not too many twists and turns in it. Cool, not bad. Nice and easy. Grab that piece. And now for everybody's favorite part. Of course. Oh, let me go back to here. There we go. Wrong screen. Just want to get that level up so uh, if I die, I don't lose all the experience from it. Like right there. Where are the mods? Nobody ever knows. Okay. There's our level. Again, one point in fade. Eh. Doesn't quite do enough for me. Let's go here. <laughs> Why would anyone need mods? I don't know. Don't ask me. A little safety up. Come on. And this is where I'm just going to teleport through. But again, do note, it is possible to uh, kill everything slowly but surely. Takes too long for my patience levels, though. Oof, what a map. Nice and long. We will avoid that, avoid that, and go to level three. Avoid that boss group, because again, just fighting a bunch of light immunes is really not that fun. Beetles, that is, especially. We'll repair, so we get those charges back. And now we can go to the Arcane Sanctuary. Oh, jeez, got her. Neither. Source of my little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's just... That's just how it is. Certain characters in this game, like a sorceress, really just have, you know, advantage there. They're just going to be stronger. But, again, this character, for instance, is not bad. Like, Alpha, thank you very much for the sub. That's right, we're also matching Daddy Bezos' subs today. 
Don't forget to use your Bezos bucks. Not only will you be taken from him, you'll also be taken a little bit from me. It's just double dipping everywhere. Just slow? Yeah, she's just gonna be a little bit more slow. She's gonna be a character that you, you take a little bit of time to build up, right? Just that that character that you you just say, okay, I'm gonna level a little bit, right? That's kind of the the piece. And then even you know if you're going through here, you can say, I'm gonna take my time going through here. I'm gonna cloak of shadows and you know kill stuff like this, just one thing at a time. You know, like you can you can slow play this character nice and easily. And if you farm up a couple of those key pieces, you farm that lem rune, right? You farm the, or lem rune and get the smoke. You farm a rock stopper. You farm something nice for all that. And you can make your way through. And I mean, again, is this terrible? No, like it's doing just fine. And I'm under leveled and low geared and all of that. Like once you get more of that, you're getting more of those plus skills, all that stuff. You're really gonna notice that she starts to pick up and her damage starts to become a lot more fun. Um, you know, with Angelic, she's hitting a lot more so that you don't have to worry about constantly just like trying to hit and failing. So, just uh. A lot to think about with that stuff. And I always try and just emphasize it with these guided playthrough characters because again, when I'm playing through these characters, I'm playing through these characters very quickly. And this this should not be your, you know, expected playthrough speed by any means. And with these, you can also, you know, really, uh, you know, maybe you get some runes out here as well, right? Again, you can farm a Lem rune doing things like Countess and LK runs and stuff, trying to specifically get it. Or you can just get it just from killing specters, popping these chests. They can be in here, like, you know, so it can be worth just checking in a variety of things variety of places playing through you never know what you're gonna get and that's one of the fun things about Diablo 2 is there's a lot of different pieces um, you know to just help out with that yeah those specters and chests can be super nice for rune finding depending on alpacas Alpacas are cute, you know. And if you want to be extra cheeky, before you pop those chests at the end, you can switch over to Player's 8. And then you'll get Player's 8 chest drops, which can be a lot nicer. So... Get a little third way action. Feel free to kill the summoner if you want, or not. Not required. Looks like circle maybe? And time to move forward towards Duriel, who will be a pain. Just naturally going to happen. Duriel is a pain, you know. Now, down here, we actually have not a terrible thing in that. Uh, 
you know, a lot of a lot of the monsters here. We didn't get any beetles, it looks like. Which is actually beneficial to us. So actually a lot of stuff that we can kind of kill here and do some okay damage to. A lot of the poison immunes. Do a little bit of farmy farm. Get that experience. Whatever you want. There's some greater talons as well. Let's go sell this and then we can come back for this. Perfect. More gold. I'm going to get a few more health potions. And we'll also want to be careful that we don't run out of TPs. So we need to watch for that at some point. Okay. And Superior Warfist. Two different claws we can check out. In the meantime, nothing on those. Three to Shadow Warrior, one to Lightning Sentry, one to Blade Shield. So if we wanted a Shadow Warrior, we could get it from that. Yep, we made our pattern. And we'll grab an antidote as well, just because it can be a little nasty in there. Alright, so, if you run into a dead end, you can of course go back through that TP and try and find your way all the way back. Or you can of course come through this way again and say, alright, that led to nothing. So maybe down and over will lead to something, and then you can come back this way. We could even go up and see if this kicks out left. Just try a variety of paths, and there we go. That leads us to Duriel. So we can, again, do Duriel right here. Now, heading towards Duriel, something that is very helpful, actually, is making sure you actually have enough cold resist. So... I would urge you to look at different things and see if there's some way you can boost your cold resist up more. Like here I have 29 cold res, and these are 16, or that's 11 even. So I'm going to swap that ring out right now. And I'll get a little less attack rating, but honestly, getting all that cold res, I do think it's really worth it. And that puts me on 19, and then I could, if I wanted, bump up a little more. Uh, but we'll hold at that because I want the IS still. So now, of course, we're going to drink our Ovaltine in the form of Thawing Potions. And again, Duriel is going to be nasty. That's just how he's going to be. We can put a Strength on, though, and then lower Resist Wand. And the big thing I would say, again, is build up charges first out here. So you get at least three charges there. Oh, no. Remember how I said don't run out of TPs? Yeah. Don't run out of TPs. The thing is, if I died in there, there was going to be no good way to get back and retrieve my body. So, unfortunate. Um, it's not a big deal. Getting back to Duriel is not that bad. Right. I did it on purpose so you could see what happens if you do that. Why you don't have to be so upset. It's not a big deal. We just come back here. Teleport over. Drink our charges. I 
hate that we have holy freeze right there, so we're gonna drag that away. And put that there. Okay, get our charges. Go in. And now comes Duriel Fun. Which is uh, not going to be a good time. This is going to be probably the hardest fight that we that we go through right here. Because again, trying to build charges on Duriel is going to be a giant pain. And actually... I'm going to swap that ring back on. It's just such a big difference in our attack rating. Yep. So it's really going to be less about our elemental right now. And for these early charges, we want to build up charges here so we can get off free hits with that. Because free hits are going to be a good chance to get the crushing blow. So that actually is is really kind of a nice part about this, is every time we have a charge and we release a charge, it's a guaranteed hit. Which gives us a free chance. So on our first hit of building a charge, when we do connect, we have potential of building up whatever charge. Right. Yeah, I mean, like I say, this is just going to be a crushing. We have a chance for a crushing blow. And then we get another free crushing blow chance after that. I mean, it's it's just... Uh, this is what Duriel's going to be. This is just how Duriel is going to be. And our cold res just isn't high enough, sadly, because that pattern comes off and that lowers it even more. Which really just makes it tough. But we're getting hits, we're getting damage. I mean, again, I don't think anybody thought this fight was going to be an easy fight. <laughs> if you did, you're a fool. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. <laughs> we can check out our mercenary, see if he'll do okay. Would it take long to farm a limb? I mean, the thing is, you just don't know. That's kind of one of the unfortunate pieces. You just don't know how long it's going to take to farm a lem. So. And the more that we can tank for Emilio, the better. He doesn't have any crushing blow right now. This is where giving him a strength would be very helpful. We can kind of help each other out a little bit. You know. It helps, right? Like, it's not bad. We'll give him a few more things. Yeah, I mean, he's going to get two shot pretty much, so... It really is just going to come down to, like... Duriel focusing on us. Didn't want to take the focus.
Little bit there. Slow and steady. Yeah, we can try and also have him burn a little bit in that fire, right? Which honestly is not a terrible way as well to get some damage dealt. But we should be uh, able to kill him here on this next time through. Let's get Emilio. And let's go build up three charges. See if we can be quick enough with them to get into Terials and get them off on him. There you go. And that's about as rough as they come. I mean, that's a tough one. <laughs> like, Duriel with his slow and everything, that's a tough one. We're underleveled, all of that. And just like that, give yourselves a clap, everybody. Hell Act 2 is complete. And uh, Duriel is downed. 32 attack, 32 to attack rating, 50 to poison damage. I actually like it. More attack rating is great because again, every boost to attack rating is actually like extra boosting us since we get all of the percent boost, 225% whatever for for these skills. So we like that. We like that very much. But yes, having some extra gear there, having some, uh, you know, extra levels there will help. It'll still probably not be your favorite fight, I promise. But it's just unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, we're level 60, and Duriel's level 80-something, and I mean, it's just, it's just gonna be hard. It's just kinda the nature, unfortunately, of melee. I really wish they would fix it and remove the level uh, piece from it, because that honestly plays such a, a big role in what I think making melee even more underpowered than it needs to be. Having the level piece also be in there. Okay, so we found the Great Marsh. Can leave a TP for ourselves. Blessed Amorous worth it. I mean, he can be for sure. The problem is he's going to die instantly, right? Like, most everything, especially when you're super underleveled, is going to die pretty quickly. I do think if you if you are overleveled and you have Emilio and you've gotten him an insight and maybe a smoke himself and things like that, you're now going to be in a better spot. So I'm, you know, I'm getting myself a treachery, my mercenary treachery, my mercenary and insight, all of this stuff and slow playing this character through and it's going to actually start being pretty effective. And then I can go through and kill all the monsters one by one and, you know, go through at an okay pace. Because again, this character doesn't move at a slow, terrible pace where it does no damage. Like, it can do okay damage. The big issue is kind of survivability can be a little difficult. And, you know, being underleveled and being melee can be a little difficult. So if you really can attack both of those issues, it can do a ton for you. We 
Again, this is where we can really take advantage of our mind control abilities. Grab the eye and get out. If you want to fight all that stuff, be my guest. Be my guest. Wow, TG. Okay, and that does have a path through, probably to Great Marsh. Go Cowboys! Okay, seven to life, too low to really care. Increase gear for that limited time as well. So we'll work our way through. And this is also where I'll say, if you come out here and there's a bunch of something crazy like souls, that's just going to be death. It's okay to bounce out, come back in, and just keep trying until you don't get that monster spawn. Because it doesn't always spawn. A lot of people think there's always souls in the Great Marsh or the Plains of Despair or level 2 of World Stone. That's not the case. It's not an always thing. It selects, and sometimes you get them, and sometimes you don't. There is a frequency of what it, when it's chosen and stuff, but this is a uh, very helpful way. And additionally, we can double check. There's no flare jungle. There is not. So there's souls again. It happens, you know? It just happens. Correct, Pizza. Because I'd rather not fight <laughs> souls. Plain and simple. They just will destroy my face. Don't really care to fight Holy Freeze. And I mean, at this point... You know, I'm a good enough level, I don't feel like I'm going to stop to fight too much stuff. But, like, this would be a, a great example of something that, you know, very easily could be fought. Right? Like, it's uh, nice and simple. It's not a crazy dangerous boss group. Like, build up your charges, get them off. Obviously, the Conviction Aura isn't super fun. But this would be an example of a boss where, yeah, fighting it is not terrible. Easy experience to get. Easy stuff to kill. Blah, 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 blah. You can do that. <laughs> Thanks, Irish. Make it to the flare jungle. Can be a little dangerous out here. This is where also that crowd control is really going to come into play. As, uh, like I say, you can get very, very aggressive flare jungles just full of soul killers. So if that happens... Control them. Use the power. It just makes life a lot easier for you. Plain and simple. When you do that stuff. Vengeance Paladin was actually one of my favorite playthroughs. Again, kind of similar to this in that it's not perfect. Right? 30 light reds, 50 to mana. It's not bad.
I, I kind of like it. We lose some res, but we would gain light res here, which would be really important. I'm going to hold it for now. I'm going to hold it. Thank you, Irish. Appreciate that. 21 matching gifted subs. Boy. <laughs> and just find ourselves a waypoint. No waypoint there. I have a Vengeance Paladin guided playthrough. And again, it was probably one of my most fun, surprising guided playthroughs. Because I did not expect it to be that good of a time. You know? Just seems like that's a, that's a build where you're like, it's just going to be not fun. But it played quite well. It really did. And I didn't even play it super well. I wasn't even, like, building, you know, a strong enough weapon early on. So I made it kind of slower than it needed to be. Okay. Go back to our flare jungle and do our flare dungeon now. And try not to get caught in tricky spots. Oof, that poison damage. Yeah, I. Again. The Sunder Charms really kind of knock out a lot of dual spec builds like later on. Early on, you know, it doesn't change anything. Later on, though, it's like, okay, well, you know, uh, I'd rather just run a single element with that. But while you're playing through the game, I mean, this is definitely kind of the way to go with it there. We got the piece. Moving forward. We continue. And always make sure, like I said before, not running out of portals. Also make sure you're not running out of like teleports. There's nothing worse than trying to teleport and in the middle of your teleport realizing, oh snap, <laughs> I, I'm out of them. You know, you make a couple teleports and then you're done. So, here we get to the lower Karas. And here's where we can go to players 8 and start popping stuff. And this is where you can find all sorts of goodies, all sorts of gold. I mean, you're going to find hundreds of thousands of gold in no time whatsoever, right? There's dust shrouds and whatever things, rings, so I is blah, blah, blah. And you can just run around and pop all the poppables because there are a ton of chests and racks and skeletons and all sorts of stuff out here. And this is not only a great place to find gems and jewels and that, but a fabulous place for finding runes as well. And remember how we talked before about wanting to make sure that we can get, um, you know, like maybe a lem rune or something. This, if you do this a few times, like, great chances for finding your Lem Rune by doing this stuff. And doing this in Nightmare as well also works. So you just kind of do a clean sweep of everything. Nice and easy. Now, the super chests are going to be the best spots, and that's going to be these two things, and I actually got an amazing map of super chests. So we'll do a couple runs of it just to show you guys a little bit. Right, but you can see how much stuff drops. It's kind of crazy. So this is probably one of the best maps I could ask for, which is unfortunate that it's kind of being wasted on, like, this character. Um... 
Yeah, but money, 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 money. Perfect, easy, hundred grand. But now, again, like I said, this map is literally a perfect map. In that, there's an amulet. I actually kind of want that. I'm going to do this. Both of my fires, you can have up to two fires. And both of my fires are right next to my waypoint. I could not buy a better map. Actually crazy. So you can just do that. Rinse and repeat. It doesn't, your magic find has nothing to do with any of this, anything like that. This is purely just. You have a better LK map than this? Really? Cause I'm not, I, I, I would struggle to figure out what I would want differently. And again, just gems and jewels and golds and all sorts of stuff here. And these pl have plenty of rune drops that also come from them. So anyways, I'm going to go back to players one. You can do that as many times as you would like. Get your gold, get whatever it is that you need there. We'll also go ahead and do Battle Maid Serena here because we can uh, lock it up. A little nasty. Oh man, there's just nowhere to be safe in there, huh? It's okay. We'll just grab Lame Essence Tome from behind and sneak our way out the front. Perfect. Recharge our teleports. Thank you, K-Mitch. 116 to attack rating is nice. However, I'd be losing like 40 res, and right now I just don't think I can lose 40 res. And we can go turn that in. Sneaking attempt failed. I need to improve my sneak. Five more points for vitality. And lower crossed again, so we can do player's eight again. And just see what we can get here. Tactical death for sure. Totally intended. Grand charm, large charm, shark skin belt. I missed that one, that's okay. We'll go back for it, and we'll go down to players one. Only 10 to life, unfortunate. Okay. And now we can progress further and aim to get to the sewers and beyond. Very glitchy to try and move. Strange. Okay, we find the chest. Which actually is helpful. Hello, good to see you. I stream EU times often. I'd say I stream EU time more than I stream NA time. And just continue through sewers here. Utilizing our skills whenever needed. 
And again, is this stuff we could fight? A hundred percent. Right, like... Definitely can take time to fight this if we so choose. But... I feel good uh, just moving forward again right now. 27 MF. 21 to life is actually not bad. 5 to strength. No. 21 to life. I have an 11 to life. And I'm going to get rid of the hit recovery. Okay. So we'll grab the little extra life there. And work our way out of the sewers. Nice and simple. And just like that, we have all three of those pieces. Which is great. Now, Travancol is a place that can be tricky for sure. You want to be very careful in the Travancol in that you don't want to get overloaded with everything. If you have all of the mobs coming at you, you're just often going to be in a bad spot. It's just going to be too difficult. So you can either... You can do a couple things. One, you can just reset till you get maybe a better spawn, right? That was kind of like a lot of mobs there. I didn't really like it. Okay, let's go ahead and reset. Try and see if we can, you know, get less of those. I'm going to get some of these. And perfect. Okay, so I kind of want to have an area that's a little more cleared out for myself. Because I often want to drag, if possible, one of the mobs. And here we can see Torque is kind of isolated. So I actually am going to try and drag Torque here away. If he'll come over to me. Kind of unfortunate. I didn't want to. And so now I can just have this one-on-one -on -one fight with him as opposed to trying to fight all of the monsters at once, which is just going to be a lot worse, right? Now, it can still be difficult and still be annoying. We can also, of course, put on our strength if we want. We can put this on as well. We can lower his resistances. Only our light damage is getting through, but again, that's okay. Because we're also building up those procs, which is helpful for us. Come on. Build up the second charge. And there you go. And that's just uh, a lot easier. We're starting like 10 a.m. on Sunday. That's just going to be a lot easier, a nice and simple way to do it, rather than trying to take them all on and fight them all at the same time. And all of this stuff, uh, you know, can just be very difficult right this is where i think a lot of people do get in trouble with characters like this this isn't a hammered in you can't run into the middle and just blow everything up you have to be a little more specific about how you're going to how you're going to fight it so we can set that and here we can also of course you know make some space for ourselves with this and Lock them out, whatever it is, take the time, let them do that, blah, blah, blah. And now, when ready, we can go in. Also, a gem shrine there if we did want to get a gem. Okay. 
For sure, Josiah. <laughs> it is a uh, single player. Thank you, though. Okay. And now we just look for our exit here to level two. Probably right there. Yep. If you want to grab the waypoint here, you totally can. Again, this is one of those up to you options. You can farm Mephisto and such. And Daryl and Mephisto can be very good farming areas. I would definitely say don't bother trying to farm here if you haven't already farmed like Nightmare Mephisto and Endariel and gotten those basic pieces though, right? Because it may just be too hard for a character like this. It may just be too difficult. But it's not too bad if you've gotten Angelic's pieces, if you've gotten both those death pieces, if you've gotten, you know, treachery and all of this stuff. Now you're going to have a much easier time, especially if you're a little higher level. And you'll probably be able to come over and farm Helmephisto and such. Um, which will be great because then that's where you're going to start getting your Shakos and all of these things, which can be really nice. Tiny toilet has not been replaced yet. It's over at my office where the AC was out. So we got the AC fixed. But that's where we're at. <laughs> okay. And then again here. I, I generally want to avoid these guys. Not, uh, not exactly a favorite to fight. And we can get ready for Mephisto here. Again, doing similar as we have to before. Swapping things around here. Now Mephisto is gonna be dangerous and does give us the unfortunate danger of uh, getting one shot with our low resistances. So that does kind of suck. If he does the charge bolt attack, um, we're going to die. <laughs> because I have negative 18 res. There's no way around it for lightning. And this is where having that slight boost to resistances really can be helpful. But even so, this will be way better than fighting Duriel, for instance. As uh, we were just not going to have nearly the pain of trying to hit and getting stunned and all of this and that. So annoying, yes, but terrible, nah. Brutal. <laughs> Nothing to be done with our low resistance. If you're on hardcore, you're you're gonna definitely not be running at this speed of getting there. You're going to spend more time leveling up. Um, all of those pieces. 100%. If you're trying to fight Mephisto with any negative resistances in hardcore, you're just uh, a fool. I mean, if you're on hardcore, you can definitely follow a guided playthrough. The difference is just going to be, again, you are not going at the speed of it. But even on softcore, I don't always recommend going at the speed of these things, right? This is uh, not the ideal speed for a character as such. It's 
It's actually interesting how much fire damage gets done to those bosses just from the tick damage. Yeah, those charge bolts are one of his nastiest spells ever. Come on. Kill him! Almost. Oh, yes, yes, I get what you're saying. Alright. And just like this, Mephisto is a jerk with charged bolts, so we don't actually get the kill. Gosh dang it. Don't make sure you don't run out of TPs. Blah, blah, blah. Come on, I need like one hit. Just burn to death. Goodbye. All right, and just like that, Mephisto has died. GG. How simple was that? It honestly was really easy. And again, if I didn't have minus 18 light res, it would be uh, very easy. But otherwise, it's a pretty smooth kill. I really did feel good through that. Like, so simple. Give yourselves the clap. And again, you can farm that. That's kind of the beauty of it. That's not like a really, really hard fight. Um, and think about if your character has some benefit above that, right? Like now your character is in a really good spot. So that makes it uh, super nice there. And let's get our teleport staff on. Now, Act 4 is going to be quite difficult. Chaos Sanctuary can be a huge pain. We've got Decrepify to deal with. Just melee in general and the chaos is tough. Plus all the different spawns of the different mobs and how they can spawn dual element and blah, blah, blah. The nice thing is, again, we do multiple damage types. So that is helpful. Uh-oh. Okay, so this is... We know where Isual is. Which is nice, but there are souls. So this is where, again, we say, eh, let's just come back. If we can get to him and the souls aren't hitting us, okay, now we're maybe gonna, you know, be all right. But I'm not gonna force that fight with souls all around. Seems like uh, not a very fun experience. Okay. And we'll just try and knock everything away. I would love a single conversion. There we go. Okay, and let's get ourselves in this corner. Okay. Ishwal, why are you not coming here? So we can actually charge up if we want on the little dudes. And then blow it up on Ishwal here. Okay. 
using our crushing blow to help out. Nice and simple. And as well, same idea with Duriel, we can buy ourselves some thawing potions. And don't just think you, you can only buy those for bosses. I mean, remember, you can buy those whenever you really want, right? You can always just stack up your thawing potions for a long time. And just have your cold res get a nice boost for minutes and minutes and minutes by just chugging some potions there. So. Easy. Nice and easy. And I'm actually considering now putting these points into Fist of Fire. I mean, I do like this as well, though. The The damage boost is nice there, but... Hmm. Yeah, we'll just keep going there. I say the Fist of Fire is, is kind of nice, though. Because the burn damage is actually really big on bosses, so... Works out very nicely for us. It's a good outfit, pizza. Okay, and we move forward again. Always just checking our charges. 13 teleport charges left. We just want to make sure we're not running out of those, right? Also, Taintants are not very fun out here. That is a quick death if we get caught. Unfortunately. And again, this is alleviated by having um, some lightning resist, right? Getting Fade, getting things like that will help a ton in these situations. So that treachery Looks better and better every every second, doesn't it? Getting all that IES. Can you do a level 1 to Ubers in D2R? I did that with a Paladin. I believe. I know Bender tried it with a Necro, but it was miserable. And then he just quit when he got to Ubers. Problem is just the Ubers and all their ads are just so so rough. You can you can kill I mean with the sorceress too. I killed all the mini Ubers with Blaze. I think it was Blaze. <laughs> but it just it just uh, falls apart after that, you know? When you get into the main one, the ads are just so hard to fight. Mm -mm. Whoa. Okay. Nice and easy, getting ourselves into the Chaos Sanctuary. Sometimes it can be annoying to like run all the way there. Yeah, you do what you want though. Again, if you want to take it step by step and clear the entire Chaos, you can spend a good, you know, 30, 40 minutes doing that. And it's really, again, it can be fun, right? I mean, it's just, because now I put myself in really tough situations when I run, do it this way. So, this is where I will say using all of your mind skills, though, is very helpful. As you are going to want to uh, have the ability to kind of control everything, right? So... And I just like to kind of create some safe spaces. 
That's generally what I'm trying to do when I'm clearing areas out like this. I'm not trying to clear the entire chaos or anything like that. But I am trying to create enough space... Oof. Got a little nasty in there. I am trying to create enough space where I can feel like I am... I have a place to always run to if I need safety. Because if you don't do that, you're just going to run into the fact that, like, oh, man, I'm constantly in a troubled spot, you know? It just happens so often. So if you can clear out some space, and especially for places for you to drag minions and stuff to, that can be really helpful. <laughs> and this is also where you could definitely see a point in death sentry being very useful <laughs> but again if we start doing that then I feel like our whole build it just becomes you know we're, we're uh, less about the elements and more about traps so I'm really going to try and not do that, just for the sake of making it more fun to watch and play along and all of that. Percent fire res. No, thank you. These oblivion knights are annoying. Okay, so we've kind of created a little bit more of a safe space. Obviously, it's not perfect, but we kind of have this downward corner below me, which I do like. I don't like the area that we have here. Okay, it's actually pretty clear now that I see more of it. My initial look of it was not as nice with a lot of stuff kind of down in there. Mm -hmm. And again, just trying to get some good damage. Some of these guys. So I actually don't mind dragging those south. That does mean I want to clear up on this side though. Because again, we need to clear at least in some capacity somewhere so we can drag away the boss. That's kind of where we're at. I'm also going to use my lower res wand. Try and help out with some of the clearing. Whew. 
It just looks like this build does no damage. It's a tough area. To, to say the least. It is, it is a, a tough area for this build for sure. It's not a good CS character. I mean, that's going to be pretty much every melee character is not a good CS character just about. You run into the Crepify, you run into all just sorts of issues like that. Boo. Now, Platypus, thank you so much. With five gifted subs and five gifted subs matched. If you do want, you can always drag away monsters as such. Bring them down over here and then lock them up. So that is an option, and just like that, you can clear out the space that way as well. I wanted to do some clearing my on my own, and some also with that. Yes, having more gear and better levels will also improve yourself here greatly. So now we'll jump over here. And we're going to work on... I'll kill this guy really fast. We're going to try and just get these guys to separate off. So if we can break the chain... That can be very helpful, and I'm actually going to go back to this. Because what I want is I want to fight the boss by himself. And Cloak of Shadows can be the way to do this. As he will not have that effect. So he will continue running to me. And dang, we got those guys. They ended up coming along because the chain isn't broken. So monsters have a chain in this game. And the way to break it is to essentially go back and forth through town. And by doing so, they'll start to actually advance onto you, which can be very useful. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We've got most of them down here, which is good. I just need to latch you and do as such. It's annoying that he teleports. Come on. Again. And this is looking a lot better. And now we can jump out this way. Building up a variety of charges as well. Yeah. 
So it looks like he's mana burn. Which is annoying. But, again, getting more separation. And once we have that... Perfect. Just drag him over and fight him alone. Again, when you are more leveled up, you'll hit more often. It won't be as bad. Also, this is one of the worst areas for this character. I don't know what you're expecting. And we can swap over as well and put this on. Resist action. Everybody plays hammers and uh, expects everything to be the same speed as a hammerton. Nice and easy. First boss down. Okay, again, we can make ourselves some space. And the first thing that you should always note is as soon as you clear out a single area, you now no longer need that area. So all of that safe space that we had created there before doesn't really need to be there for us, right? So now I want my safe space to be up in the secondary area. So we can drag all of these guys down here. And again, try and get more drag going up above. I'll probably need a couple rounds of this. as we pull them all lower and then you just need some conversions they'll turn in on each other and you're good to go you can go back up do your secondary grab of mobs all right try and get those champions I'm going to lock those guys in again. And we can maybe at least get a couple champion casters away, which will be helpful. Perfect. Beautiful. So now we come up here, and our second safe space is a lot better looking. Stack up on some potions. Repair, and let's clear this out as well. see but it's 
working. Works for me. Uh, a majority of Diablo 2 players have never soloed their way through hell. Which is why they don't understand things like this. They're like, but it's slow! <laughs> Forty percent chance to hit. Again, I'm. this is an area level 85 and I'm level 61. I mean, no matter, even if I have really good attack rating, it's going to be hard to hit things. Okay, so we've got this area cleared out for ourselves. Now we're going to... Head over here and try and lock these guys together so that we can pop this and get ourselves away. And again, trying to kind of break the lock there as well, right? Remember that. Sell so these things. We can repair. And we can swap over here as well. So if we can drag these guys away at all, it wouldn't be bad. Additionally, I don't mind fighting them. Okay, so they are going to do like that. Locking them up with cold damage. Could be a little dangerous here. Nice and easy. He's immune to cold and fire, which is a little bit annoying, but again, not too bad. As lightning damage. Still hits, and we have decent lightning damage. Perfect. Try and kick him away from everything else. No! He always likes to do that, where he goes back into where all the other mobs are. He's so annoying like that. It's all good. Oh, no. Just got cut. You're so annoying to say. Quit running away from me.
Okay, we're gonna build up the ultra ultra hit here. Come in on him. Hey, I thought I'd arrest him. Hmm, guess not. That I did. Come on. Okay, Desais. He'd have been dead if I had a little res on him. Rough out here for a level 60 melee and chaos. That it is. But, two down. Third one is on. And it is... Time for dragging. Okay, so let's get first just this initial group away. Put our teleport staff on. Because we can now drag down to the bottom and to the top and all around. Kind of whatever you please. Make sure that you get stuff mind blasted and locked away. Now we can bring in the other boss. 37 life, 13 cold res. Only 23 attack rating. I, I need the I need the AR, AR still too much, I think. Even though it's probably at this point not having as much of an effect. Okay. We can try and give it a go with this and see how it works. Multi enchanted is not going to be fun here. But at least we can start to kill a lot of the stuff here. And then we can focus on killing the boss after. A single point in death's entry would be helpful. Again, I'm avoiding it because I want this to be as non-traps in as possible because it's always better to just keep going into the traps essentially, right? It's kind of the unfortunate truth about it. Okay, we're gonna knock him back and then drag these guys away. Okay, I need those guys to chase me though. So I need them to come off of that. But again, I definitely recommend, if you want to, to have that, then go for it. Get yourself Death Sentry, it is very nice. I'm just trying to really, you know, be a martial arts playthrough here, right? OK, 
Okay, and we're just building up our cold damage. Pretty good. Pretty good. And now for Diablo, I am going to get rid of this curse. Certic, thank you very much. Another sub to match. And remember with Diablo, we can stay underneath and avoid his lightning damage. So we actually like it when he does lightning at us. As it goes over our head. Thanks for the content. Subscribing for the new ladder launch. Thanks, Tanko. Shouldn't be a thing, but it is. And we can also, of course, lower res Diablo. And here again, you can see the uh, the fire damage is actually nice. Just the tick from the meteor. Just letting him kind of stand in his own element. So this is where those points, if you had put them into Meteor, are actually much better for bosses. Um, hey mate, are you gonna race to fire? nine again in season two? Unfortunately. Wow, Storm Shield. All right, Warga, thank you so much. Wow. It's a fabulous item. Required level 73, unfortunately, but damage reduced by 35%. Additionally, you get the faster block rate and increased chance of blocking. Um, if I was 73, it would be tempting. Now, I do need 156 strength, and then I would also want to get dexterity probably for some blocking. You can shove a P diamond in it, get even more resistance, which is really nice. Um, but that damage reduced by 35% is very solid. Mix that with a fade from Treachery, and that is now 50% damage reduced. And the character would actually be very, very, like, uh, solid. I mean, it'd be in a really good position there. So that is a, a very nice find. Um, yeah. Honestly, for a Hell Chaos... As a level 61 melee character, I gotta say, that was pretty good. That was uh, pretty darn good. Did it have its difficulties? Of course. Of course it has its difficulties. But that's gonna be the hardest area for this character in the game. That and Duriel are probably two of like the hardest, I would say. Wait, where did my... Oh. Oops. Go there. Okay, there we go. I didn't do Hellforge. Hellforge is going to be probably a nightmare. If you want, we can go try it. I mean, we can do it. It's just going to be rough. But we can give it a shot. Uh... You know. The, I'm using blade talons. I have a pair of graders in my uh, stash there if I want to get down to the graders. It doesn't really matter right now with my current burst of speed and stuff, but if I do shift over into using treachery, then it could actually start to matter and be not a bad idea.
so. And again, like before, we want to keep things kind of away, right? We want to create a safe space for ourselves a little bit if we can. So up here, there's a lot. And I am going to grab all of these guys and just get them out of here. Really try and bring them down if possible here. Let's just drag him, actually. All right. Oh, boy. Oh, he's cursed. That's bad. Jesus. It's gonna be tough with the curse. I'm dead. Oh my god. Again, not a uh, grouping. I'm I'm often gonna try and go fight here, in Smith. But it seems like it might actually be better to keep them all together. So then I can build up charges on the off guys and then go unleash them all on him. But even that's just going to be iffy. Oh no! Wrong skill. Build up all the charges. Woo. Not an S tier build, that's for sure. Also, again, a difficult area. I'm just gonna leave him be. You get the picture. <laughs> With five gifted subs! Did we almost get him? I'm not sure about that. Really? It's just the, the maggots and stuff I think are just gonna make it too awful. I think that's going to be my big issue, is trying to... Okay, 
he's yeah, he's he's just not really losing. There's there's too many mobs here. The maggots are just infinitely spawning. So we probably need to go in with a river of flame where we can get a full drag out, and it's not um, going to be flooded with like maggots there. Because that's just not going to work well. And there's some maggots there. Yeah, Mitora and Maulers. Probably not a great combination. Yeah. It's alright. <laughs> To Act 5 we go! Ride your bike! With 20 gifted subs! Wow! Is this why no one makes assassin? Again! We're under leveled, under geared, all of that. Can we get some poggers in the chat? That is insane. Thank you so much, Ride Your Bike. My goodness. Coming off of the Nados there with the five as well. That brings us up to 54 matched gift subs today. Today is the last day that subs are 25% off, including gifted subs. So we will be uh, matching. Gifting to match. Darn, damage Shaco. <laughs> My goodness. Overall, have I enjoyed this playthrough? It's been okay. It's been about what I thought it would be. Normal and Nightmare were very enjoyable. Hell is you just it, it's a build that needs farm because you need attack rating you need farm which just means it's just going to be a little bit difficult you know so that's the you know that's just kind of the, the skinny of it right it needs to get that treachery it needs to get a couple more pieces to help it out it just, it doesn't do it on its own very well. So it's not fully reliable in like a speedrun form through hell. But through normal and nightmare, I mean, we were killing players 8 stuff. I thought it was actually fantastic. So I think if you're going to do this playthrough, my recommendation would definitely be go and spend time farming up a little bit, right? If you do that, I think you'll actually enjoy it. A little bit of level and a little bit of farm, right? Get yourself even just angelics and, you know, basic stuff like that. I think that'll do a lot of, uh, of it. But even then, I mean, right there, it can kill. It can still kill stuff. It can still do okay in the game. It's, it's not a complete trash build that can't do anything. Like, I mean, I'm very under farmed and I thought the chaos went really well. You know? I do actually think instead of Blades of Ice, dumping points into Fist of Fire might be a better way to go. Since all that fire damage on Phoenix Strike for the burn is actually showing to be pretty useful. That's definitely something that I'm like starting to notice here. Is man, if I like stack that, I feel like the bosses would go down really fast. And they already go down quickly, so it's not like a huge deal. But they would go down very, very quickly. Because it just, stuff that sits in the burn just dies really fast. Yeah, finding the enemy can be a little harder, for sure. You like the actual immerse for this build and it holds its own? Really? I mean, I guess if you're leveling up, things can hold their own better for sure. I just have pattern. And I have a strength as well. 
Yeah, if you're here with a couple items in level 80, it's a very different story. And I mean just a couple items, even. Couple angelics, both the set, you know, deaths pieces together. Um, rock stopper, treachery. You don't need all of these, by the way. These are just if you have a few of them. Stuff like that. Huge. Absolutely huge difference. Ouch. That hurt. Hello. I'm dead. Woo I'm alive. I like it, Lucian. This isn't a PvP character. This isn't a best magic find character. You make this character because you want to have fun playing the game and you thought this character looked fun. That's it. Doors are the final boss, man. So good. Like, and that's how it is for a lot of characters in Diablo, you know? Why do you make it? Because it's fun. Because it's a different kind of character to play through the game with. Having fun in 2022? I know, it's... Uh, a lot of people don't understand that. They're like, no, needs to be most efficient. It's like, if you just want that, then you're just going to play Hammered in over and over every time, and then you'll get bored of the game. I'm going to get the waypoint here, just to be safe. Always a good idea. And then we can go up to the Ancients. And again, as we did before with the Ancients, we can drop those down. I'm not even going to keep my pattern in my inventory as uh, we know I'm going to want strength for the crushing blow. Nah, they'll blow it somehow, Irish. And as always, we can put these things into our cube. But this fight will probably be a little tricky. I'm definitely going to want a lot of potions. So dropping potions all over is going to be a decent idea. Remember, they do disappear, so you can't just drop them forever, but... Can be nice still. And we'll do one more set. Perfect. Okay, hopefully that's enough. We can uh, try our luck. Shall we? Now, things to note. Number one. Number one. 
Um, we don't want to spawn things that are kind of immune to everything, right? Because there's going to be a variety of affixes that they're going to spawn, right? Extra strong, curse, blah, 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 all that stuff. So first we want to think about the basics of like, I don't want to deal with cursed. That's just going to be rough. Unless it's maybe on like Korlik and he's far off. But even then, having to man up against Korlik when I'm cursed, I'm going to be taking a lot of damage. Extra strong could also be kind of dangerous. Teleport I would love. Um, I wouldn't mind a couple different auras. They can be kind of tricky, uh, but like conviction auras, you know, not too bad unless they have like crazy elemental damage that they're somehow dealing. Um, extra fast isn't terrible. It depends who it's on. I don't want extra fast on Talic because spinning is going to be completely rough. Um, but you know, like extra fast Korlik or something isn't a terrible thing because I'm going to be Mama, spacing them out, everything like that. Player? Magic resistant is kind of annoying, but could be okay. Um, you know, if, if they're just like fire enchanted or cold enchanted, again, if they're like a single one of those, it can be okay. I wouldn't want lightning enchanted just because I'm going to take too much damage from it. Uh, but the other ones, you know, you'll kind of see and feel out. So that kind of goes through a list of different things. I am going to repair my TP staff as I want to have enough charges so I can separate them away from each other. And then of course we have our strength right here. So, spectral hit, fire enchant, extra fast aura enchant with blessed aim, stone skin, and extra strong. That was very weird, it was blocked there. Honestly, I, I think I can do these. Stone skin extra strong is Maybe one that we have to ditch though, because Stone Skin's gonna make it very hard to hit him, and extra strong may just be too much damage. I'm gonna test out how it feels. Um and and try and get him separated off if I can. Because it just may be really hard to get that hit in. Because he also is going to shout. But we do get the guaranteed hit. Ah, but the stone skin's going to knock my crushing blow down. So I actually don't want to deal with it. It's going to just take way too long for that fight. So it was very good otherwise. Extra strong magic resist, spectral hit, cold enchant. Uh, a little too much. He's immune to everything. That's not going to be great for our build. Cold enchant extra fast there. Cold enchant light enchant. I mean, that first one was so good. Don't want that. Holy freeze. Extra strong, extra strong. Cursed. Make sure you don't run out of teepees. Extra strong again, extra fast, mana burn, lightning enchanted, no thank you. Cursed and stone skin. Fire enchanted, aura enchanted, mana burn, spectral hit, extra strong, aura enchanted. Just a little too much. Cold fire enchant. Teleport and stone skin again. Ah, just annoying. It's really tough because this build really does not want a lot of things. Lightning enchanted. I'm going to go back and get more TPs. Magic resist, lightning enchanted. Aura, that's might aura, can't do that. Stone skin again. Stone skin again. Lightning enchanted there. Might aura there, gross. Gross. 
Fire enchanted, teleport, cold enchanted, magic, teleportation, cursed. I think we can give this one a try. The cursed from Korlik may be a little bit nasty. And I'm also going to drop potions on the ground. And pick potions up from the ground. And let's see if we can separate just him off. Okay. Come on. He's going to be one of the most annoying to fight. Hello. Okay. Don't want to get too far. I don't want to drag the other guys over here. Come on. And Cloak of Shadows in the old game you used to not be able to use at Ancients, but now you can. Which is very nice. And just whenever you need a quick break. Take your break from him. Ouch. So you don't die. Come on. And him being magic resistant again is going to be a little bit annoying. That is okay. Try and burn him down in there. And heal up. <laughs> Again, heal up a little, a little peekaboo. Ouch. 
Ouch. Whew. It's tough. Burn, baby, burn. Burn him out. Oh, come on. Really? All right, there we go. One down. A lot of potions down, for sure. So, to refresh our potions, because they are on a clock, we can come over here and just redrop them and then go pick these ones up. And that will restart the clock. Which is helpful. Perfect. Okay, let's see if we can get them separated. Okay, not quite. Corlick, come to me. Dang it. Okay, let's get our teleport staff on for this. No, that's bad. Okay. Jeez. Such a hard run, man. Such a tough one. Oh boy. Actually, we need to go north there. Hmm. Probably just reset. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. I was trying to get the teleport. He just, he had some faster runog boots. And he, it felt like he just kind of got a really nasty jump on me. It's also not a great setup in terms of map to get back to Ancients, which is a little unfortunate. It's usually helpful if it's not like terrible to try and get back there just in case you die, but this one is pretty bad. So let's reset it. Again, we're under level then this is the final challenge I would say mm. 
This is like the last really difficult part of the build. Unfortunately, it is a quite difficult part of the build. Or of the run, I should say. Excuse me. Okay. Not bad. Nah, I mean, Bale will be a little difficult. He'll be a little annoying, like waves and stuff, but I, I don't think it'll be harder than this. Okay. Oh, wait. Potions! Didn't beat Ancient yet? Nope! Fought one. But unfortunately, the spinning got us. Which is the unfortunate part. Health potions. And last one. Tiger Strike is better. Yes. This is Phoenix Strike Assassin run. So. Don't want that. Don't want that. Lightning enchanted. Don't want that. Extra fast there. Everybody mana burn. Extra strong fire enchanted is a little scary. And the stone skin on Talic, but it's love teleport. I'm going to give this one a try. Let's see how it how it handles. What is that noise? Is it just the fire tick going along with it? Oh, thorns. It's a terrible sound. Come on. 
Okay, one down. Again, the extra strong fire enchanted does slightly concern me. Don't want this guy to one-shot me. Okay. Actually, gonna unhot key this. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, all right. Take it easy over there, Mr. Extra Strong. Do need to refresh these potions pretty soon. Maybe worth doing that now. Nice and easy. Yeah, gotta prevent him from disappearing. Wish I had that storm shield and f treachery. Treachery would make this a thousand times easier. Whoa! Hello. Okay, don't die, don't die, don't die. Try this strategy till we get them stunned. Okay. 
Come on. Just need some good procs. Oh my god. Come on. Yeah, I mean, it's not an easy fight. <laughs> this is uh, a given. right level to be doing this fight I mean again you probably want to be in your mid 70s at least if you're doing this be my recommendation plus have some gear him being fire enchanted definitely hurts because if he could take some fire damage it would be a lot better position Get him, Llama. Get Show him, Darcy. You know, that would do a lot for this character. And just for the damage being dealt. But since that can't tick anything. Thank you, Harvey. But we're getting there. Slow and steady. Using slightly more potions than I wanted to on Maddock. But Maddock also shouts, which is super annoying, so it makes it really hard to hit him. Because he just gets high defense. So he's going to be the like hardest to hit, and him with stone skin is just like impossible. Don't even bother. Come on. Okay. No hits. Come on. One more. Few too many potions here. And his shout just never wears off. I'm scared of his fire enchanted explosion, I'm not gonna lie. I need to be like full life when I actually kill him. Which is gonna be really hard.
Ah, uh, we might just be dead. Come on. Shoot. Am I out of health potions? Really? All right, well, we lose. Ah, oh, my gosh. Madoc, man. Okay, so no fire enchant on Madoc. New lesson. New lesson. Can't do fire enchant there. Because you need the fire damage. It's a tough one. It's alright. This is a, a learning experience for myself as well on the guided playthrough. Yeah, I'm trying to stack more health pots, but yeah, that fight just, uh, I really think being able to have the fire burn them is going to be a big key to it actually like working out okay. Gave up that close. I mean, we just didn't have a chance. We weren't going to be able to fight them. You have to pick him up, actually, yeah. No. Four with five gifted subs. Thank you so much. We'll go one more round. Hopefully that's enough. Yeah, it's tough to... This this build is not a good ancients build. Cursed. Too much stone skin and stuff. Lightning enchanted. Might aura. Cold enchanted cursed. I just don't want the cursed. Can't do holy freeze. Ah, that's good. Thank you. Ooh. Reddish fast, extra fast curse, lightning enchanted mana burn. Gross. Thank you, Moo Girl. Teleportation magic, teleportation mana burn. Ay, 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 ay. Stone skin spectral hit. It's like not a bad combination, you know. They don't do a ton of damage, so. Uh, you are fast. Okay. Good to note. Maddock has some faster run walk boots on. So if we can get him a little bit ahead.
of the others, then he will separate off. Really? What are you doing over here? Ah, they're like blocking him in so he can't get around him. Super annoying. Okay. This should be good. Put a bunch of meteors on him. These new arch nemesis monsters looks really difficult. So much better when he doesn't do crap tons of damage and we can burn him down. Yeah. Ha again, having him be fire resistant as well was just too much. Thank you, Gotti! Oh, that's annoying. He's gonna teleport his way out. Come here. Burn, baby, burn! Come on. I need you to stop moving before the meteor drops. <laughs> Much more pleasant. Uh oh. It's annoying. Come here. Die! Are you kidding? The boys are back in town. Boys are back in town. There we go. Okay, that mana burn is going to be very annoying, but... Such is life. Uh oh, I'm dead. He locked me in. Okay, so let us juggle all the potions. Got kind of lucky and unlucky. Unlucky that we got blocked in because he leap attacked on top of us. Lucky that we didn't die. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, he kind of does a little bit of damage, which I don't like. He's hitting a little harder than I was hoping. Okay. 
Eh, okay, not as bad. Okay, remember this is just to keep our potions rolling. Perfect. Okay. So let's do some stuff. Shall we? Really? The mana burn is going to be quite annoying here. Stop being annoying. You're not invited, Talik. My god. Such a weirdo. And he's so slow is the problem as well. He's like preventing Korlik from jumping to me as well. This is actually the slowest Talag I swear I've ever seen. It's like he has negative faster run walk, I think. Okay, Korlik, here we go. But it's like a problem that he's so slow. Did we get Talik as well? Oh my god. Yeah. Look at how slow he is. Korlik, you need to let Talik get away. Even though this mana burn isn't fun, we can kind of just power through it, feels like. And we'll just kind of burn them down and nice and steady. There you go. Two ancients down. One to go. If he'll ever take the last bit of damage. And juggle a few more potions just to be certain but now important things here we do not want to get spun on that is how we die so what we do is we make sure that he comes at us from this straight angle get him away and then down this way and again same as we've done before we stand right here. Oh yeah, the fire is not going to hit him. That's right. 
Now, he is stone skin, which is going to be annoying. Not a lot to be done about that. If you start getting too low in health, just move out of the way. Like now. And we can always come back and do the same thing. He's kind of hitting a little bit harder than I would like. And again, stone skin does suck for us here. With the spectral hit, it also sucks. But. Such is life. And just watching our life total. It's very hard to get all the ancients perfect, you know. I probably would have much preferred if he was like mana burn or something. Teleport, you know, that would be great. But remember, whenever we have charges, even though the fire is not doing anything, the charges are good because those are guaranteed hits, which can be guaranteed crushing blows. So, okay, a little too much damage taken. We'll run away again. Of course, do not get spun on. As we don't want to take all that damage. And we'll invite him to come fight us head on again. Extra fast can be nice for splitting them up, yes. Though I don't really like it on Talic that much. Dragon Talon here. I swear if this fails again. Come on. We just end the guided playthrough. <laughs> Say, you know what to do. Steady. Again, stone skin is very not ideal. I would prefer to roll out of it. It's just everything else was pretty good. So I felt like it was hard to roll out of that. But 
you see whenever they don't spawn ridiculous things, like Korlik and Madoc, they're not too bad, right? Yeah, stone skin is very rough on these builds for sure. How much for a save and quit? Get out of here. And we're below the T. Yeah, because not only is stone skin hurting it and making it harder to hit him, but also the crushing blow is less effective against him. So the combination is is really annoying, actually. But slowly but surely, we will take him out. Build up some charges. Get our lower res off. And you can see the damage is actually not bad there from the elemental with the lower res. Easy! Not even a sweat, you guys. Didn't even take an hour. And just like that, I'm gonna put this into Fist of Fire, just for some fun. First try, just like that. Oh, we're out of gold. Mm, I mean, kind of, like we have a lot of stuff to sell, so not really. Let's sell some gems. Uh-huh. So you, you, and you. We can also, of course, go to LK. Storm Shield, easy 35 grand. And what else we got? I guess I'll put my pattern back on. My teleport staff back on. Yoni Bear, thank you. And like we said before, you can always, if you ever need gold, I'm just gonna make some space real fast. Go to players eight, do a quick lower cost. Plate mail. Read you potion like should be nice. Get some gold. Tomahawk. Diamond bows probably do some money as well. Just grab some random stuff, right? If we find one of those big bad boys, get more, but we can actually go back. Find a nice chest. Serpent skin. Now, a lot of things will be damaged, which is annoying. But, ooh, a Shaco. Here we go. A winged helm. What do I have there, Shaco? Okay. Let's grab the winged helm. Perfect. 
not from the super chest, but from regular chest shard. And 35k, 8k, 6k, 52k more, nice and easy, and there's even more around there if we wanted to go back and grab even more. Ninetale, thank you very much. But for now, let us move forward. Now we are going to want to be careful in here. This is where... First off, those guys just do way too much damage as a heads up. But we're uh, utilizing Cloak of Shadows and Mind Blast can be very helpful. You missed Ancients? It was that fast. Hopefully no souls down here. Unfortunately, there are souls. So we are going to have to do our best with Cloak of Shadows and Mind Blast to keep them from souling us. This looks very rough. That's going to be a tough one, huh? Sometimes you just run into the worst combinations of things. And that was about as bad of a level two as you're going to have when that happens. You just got to restart. I was trying to push it, but, you know. We all knew the best option there was uh, just restart, and that's why we got this waypoint. Because you just get unlucky sometimes. We've had uh, a lot of souls in hell so far. Every map loves to spawn them. But we also know where we need to start heading. As that is all dead ends over there. So waypoint should be just to the right, and then our exit should be like straight up, roughly. Here's waypoint, and exit. Nice and easy. Go heal that off. Level three. Join my army of the dead. Don't you know the seed for no souls? That damage was surprisingly high. Am I still on players 8? Uh, I think I'm still on players 8, you guys. That would make sense as to why that was so much damage. Don't be on players 8. No, Ancients was P1. Yucky, man. Alright, and Throne, hopefully no souls and nothing too crazy. This is where we may end up walking it in, right? This is one of those situations where you can say, okay, you know what? Let's uh, let's slow play this here. Eh, 
Eh, we can wait on that. And just kind of kill stuff, right? Take your time. Work your way in slowly but surely. Again, these are high level areas. They're gonna be hard. Unfortunately. It's just what comes with it. But you can use a uh, variety of skills there and kind of help yourself out with it. Get the burn. And again, that burn is actually really nice. Nice and easy. Now we don't know what other mobs we have down here, so this will be interesting to see. Hopefully nothing too awful in the throne room. But we'll see. Doom Knights. My favorite. More Doom Knights. More of those. Okay. I mean, it's not terrible. It's not great. Could definitely be worse, though. Ah, snakes is what I wasn't hoping for. One of them. But that's okay. Better than souls. I didn't think that person was going to hit me. Clean up some stuff here, and for not even the last time, remember, this is a level 62 character in an area level 85. It's going to have its issues, especially a melee build that has attack rating and hit chance requirements. I would say overall, it's doing not too shabby. Join my army. Sounds like a bunch of bad excuses. <laughs> For sure. But I just want to clean up so we can make some space to drag some monsters. Because honestly, trying to kill wave 5 and stuff, that's going to be when you really hate yourself. Highly recommended to avoid something terrible like that. Really? There were so many other mobs to kill there. That's lame. <laughs> All right, with the long range down there. Just a lot of monsters here to deal with. Okay, 
I'm gonna go ahead and get lower resist working as well. Bright lights, thank you. Sixty one subs to match. These guys didn't move around so much, it wouldn't be nearly as bad. But they won't sit and fire or anything. Hmm. A lot of moving monsters that run away here. Sitting the fire. Woo. It's a spicy one, man. It is a spicy one. I thought I had two rows of health potions. Oopsies. Yeah, the Oblivion Knights are a big pain. subs to bring us to 69 oh. and 70 thank you to selenia i just want to clear these areas out that oblivion knight's almost dead that guy's dead that guy's dead. <sighs> Thank you, Hades. Thank you, Selenia. Again, they just move so much. Oblivion Knights are this character's nightmare. just are not very nice. You know that? Mm. 
<laughs> this is how the D2 devs intended it. Exactly. I mean, hey, we're, we're making headway-ish. Oh, there's four Oblivion Knights. Okay, even better. Even better. Okay. Alright, get him in the corner. No! Let's get more health pots. Cam live! Thank you! Come on, Meteor, where are you? Okay. Burn him to death. Two down. Perfect. Whew. Finally. <laughs> Got him in the corner. Okay. I think there's one more to take care of. Easy. And now we have a nice and clean outside area, which will be much better to fight in. Unravelers can uh, revive them, yes. If we bring Unravelers down there to the where they are. And if we leave their corpses there, which we can go after removing their corpses. To remove corpses, we can just bring our TP and stuff away from where they're at. And that can help with that. Excuse me. Whew, nice and easy. And I believe their corpses are gone. That corpse is still there. So again, if we want to get rid of that corpse. Whew. We go to town back and forth a few times. Kind of like despawns the area. You can see now that corpse is gone, so he won't be revived. Fun little tip. 
And we've also broken this already. That chain. Oops. Again, by the same way of going to town. So just build ourselves up nice and slowly. Kill all these guys. Are you mana burn? Is that why you're annoying? Wave one done, nice and easy. Wave two is gonna be more annoying. I'm not doing wave skipping because in a guided playthrough that's a little hard. But I am going to try and just drag these minions away as dealing with all of them can just be really annoying altogether because then they constantly get revived. So these ones actually don't leash to their uh, masters so you can bring them down here and fight them all down and away and something that can be helpful as well is getting some thawing potions again same idea of just you know stacking up the cold res I won't engage this or I'll do a drag strat which is a lot easier for newer players to do And then you can go up and fight these guys. And remember, you also have lower resist. You want to use that. And this is also where antidotes can come in handy, just like we talked about with thawing potions. So we'll drink some of those and keep some of those as well. And nice and easy. We can try and kick him backwards. So he'll go and join up with his friends. That'll also work for me. Mercenary will just get popped instantly, sadly. A 
And having this burn damage on Achmel can be really useful. Which is going to be kind of annoying if he teleports too much. As I do want to prevent him from constantly healing up. So. The teleport is slightly annoying. And that he keeps teleporting into spots where I can't even see him. Perfect. Okay. Going for wave three. Now is definitely when we want to start fighting further south. Because if we can fight away from Bale, then we don't have to deal with the trash of Bale decrepify, which is super annoying. So we do need to get the boss here. And this is also one where you can decide if you want to fight this boss or not, right? This can be one of those waves that can be super tough. Honestly, putting my Dwarf Star on here would probably be better. But it kind of gives you the option there of, do you want to fight these guys? Or do you want to just drag them far away and not deal with them? Because again, they can kind of be tough, you know? Now, they're really not too bad with the exception of the boss, I would say. Other than that, especially if you separate them off just a little bit, They're not terrible. Mostly going to be Bartuk and his multi resistance. It's going to be awful. Chinovsky! With the gifted subs. But this is also why we cleared out the whole area, so we give ourselves space where we can come back and fight these guys like this, you know? We don't have to just wait overall. And not. So we can lead Bartuk back there. Can fight these guys. Clear ourselves even a little more space if we want. They're being really annoying, oh, healing each no. other. It's Rabs, thank you! Nice and easy. Daily reminder that prime subs do not auto renew. Pants monkey, thank you for the daily reminder. And Chinovsky again with those ten gifted subs. It's crazy. We'll go another into fist of fire because, like I said, I'm really starting to love this fire damage as it's popping out here. Wave four definitely is fightable. I mean, again, an important thing to note is we, we have the ability to really freeze and we can also, you know, mind blast and convert them over using that stuff. So it is possible to fight this wave or you can just leave this wave alone. I think both are, are totally valid. Thank you, Miramasa!
Use that lower res. And just lay the damage in there. I don't know about that hit. That was a weak, weak one. Got crit. Come on. Boo! Chinovsky with 10 more gifted subs! Good lord, Chinovsky. Oopsies. And again. Is this a, a wave that you need to fight? No. Definitely not. Drykov, thank you as well. But it's one that you can. You can if you want to, you know. You definitely want to skip wave five. Yes. Definitely would say wave five is a no-go. Wave four is uh, annoying, but... Definitely uh, possible. Get him. Big old damage. And perfect. Wave four done. Easy. Easy, you guys. Now, wave five, like I say. Do you want to fight wave five? No. There's a couple issues. One, they, uh, they're, you can't stun them with Mind Blast or convert them. You totally could do this wave. As you do have the damage to do so, it would just take a long time, a lot of kiting, they stun you, they're super annoying, all of this. So the better option is to just run them out like that and then come in. If you drag them out of Bale's throne of destruction, he'll laugh, he'll move forward, and you are good to go right there. Again, we can put our strength on here. Thank you, Miami Max, for the host. And that's painful start. <laughs> See if we can get any hits off on Bale. There's a hit. Remember, every hit is really nice because then it turns into a, a second guaranteed hit for us afterwards.
We'll go ahead and heal. Bale's level 99. We are level, what, 63? You do the math. Unfortunately, that's a bad part of this game's calculations. Too many tentacles. Get some nice hits in. Let our crushing blow do some work. And already getting close to half. And if he wants to sit in that fire, I am okay with that. As we can bring him under half. Nice and easy. <laughs> wow. We got the uh, no mana potion. A classic. Through the A, let's get into that B now. No, I don't believe they convert. You can, however, use the tentacles to charge up on if you want to go to Bale like that. So that is like one way. I think we did that in Nightmare as well. Charge up on a tentacle. Hit bail, charge up on a tentacle, hit bail, rinse and repeat. My brothers will not have died in vain. Kind of a lot of stuff over there though. We'll uh, give it a second. <laughs> Ouch. Burn in your fire bale. Don't walk out of it. Darn. 63. Again, just charge up over here. 
Come to Vale over here. Charge up over here. Go to Bale over here. Charge up over here. bit of gold we can sell a couple things sell another storm shield what if I could charge up over here Bail up over there. Uh, excuse me. That was weird. Okay, with all the tentacles, though. <laughs> Fire on bail. And let him burn in his fire to death. And just like that, everybody. Congratulations. Woo! You have uh, beat hell with a Phoenix Strike Assassin. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Like I say, through normal and nightmare, it works very well. But you really need to be able to keep yourself leveling, keep yourself ahead of the level penalty in the attack rating, defense, you know, whatever formula for chance to hit. And then also getting, um, you know, stuff like, something like Fade. Again, uh, Treachery would turn this around a ton. Dual Angelics would improve this a ton. A little bit of leveling would improve this a ton. All of those would be really helpful. I also do think going into Blades of Ice, while it was very nice because we did get good, good cold damage from it, I do think going into Fist of Fire actually may have been better just so we could continue upping that fire damage. Uh, from Phoenix Strike, having that burn was actually really, really nice. So that is something that I think uh, could have been considered here. Um, this is this tree. This is this tree. Overall, nothing too crazy about that. Stats, all that stuff, very simple. Um, obviously, strength and teleport right there. Sanders, pattern, lore. Never really found a better amulet. Rhyme, stealth. Ring, belt, another ring, and boots. We actually found no upgrades whatsoever in hell. This is the only item I believe we added. This one and that one. So really, uh, you know, had to kind of go through a little bare bones with some of the stuff. And then our low resist wand. But, hey, it works. We're through hell. It is beaten. Took a little longer than we wanted. I'd say, you know, the ancients and stuff were a little bit tricky. Um, but, yeah. That is the martial arts Phoenix Strike Assassin. Which, not as good, in my, in my opinion, as if you do run Tiger Strike uh, and Dragon Tail. But, you know, is what it is. So, thank you for watching, YouTube. Mwah! Peace. Have a good one. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.